of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining with us. I'm Father Chris, one of the Marian priests here. Honored to always celebrate Mass with our brothers. Uh, Father Gabe is with us. We also have our postulant, Alex, and Brother Mark, and Brother Ken. So today is a special day. As you see, this is the one day, or actually two days of the year, that the priest wears rose, not pink, as we always say, rose-colored vestments. And this is a beautiful vestment that was sent to me by a beautiful Marian helper in Ireland, so I'm very grateful to have received this as a special gift. Um, and today is the day of joy, a gratitude in the midst of this Advent season, which is traditionally penitential, but yet in the midst of it, we light the rose-colored candle on the Advent wreath. So let us give thanks to God for the joy and anticipation of his birth. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to <coughs> you, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have, I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in, and in my words, words in, what in what I have done, done in what I have, I have failed, failed to do, to do. through my fault, fault, through my fault, fault through my most grievous, grievous fault. Therefore, Therefore I ask, I ask Blessed, Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, Virgin all, all the angels and saints, and, saints, and, you, and you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for me to the Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh. See how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity. Enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. The glory of Lebanon will be given to them, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the hands that are feeble. Make firm the knees that are weak. Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Those whom the Lord has ransomed will return and enter Zion singing, crowned with everlasting joy. They will meet with joy and gladness. Sorrow and mourning will flee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Secures 
justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets captives free. to the blind. The Lord raises up those who were bowed down. The Lord loves the just. The Lord protects strangers. and the widow he sustains, but the way of the wicked he thwarts. The Lord shall reign forever, your God, O Zion, through all generations. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, brothers and sisters, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient with it until it receives the early and the late rains. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When John the Baptist heard in prison of the works of the Christ, he sent his disciples to Jesus with this question, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? Jesus said to them in reply, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind regain their sight, the lame walk, Lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at me. As they were going off, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? Someone dressed in fine clothing? Those who wear fine clothing are in royal palaces. Then why did you go out to see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet, this is the one about whom it is written, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way before you. Amen, I say to you, among those born of women, there has been none greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we hear uh, about John the Baptist, and we, do we, what do we know about him? Um, it's not so much who he was or maybe his history, but what he stood for. And John the Baptist is somebody that doesn't get enough attention, but that's exactly how he wanted it. Um, and so we're going to balance that. Now, brother, or Father Gabe just read about the reed. Did you catch that part? Jesus says, why did you go out in the desert? He talked about a reed and he talked about fine clothing. What's, what's this all about? All right. A reed shaken by the wind was the image that Christ used here. That was common. That was not uncommon. So people were going into the wilderness not to see that. You could see that anywhere. They were going for something extraordinary, not something ordinary. At the same time, you know, and you could say, well, there was no kind of like a sim symbol. You know, Christ uses a bunch of symbolism. Um, in John the Baptist, there's no vacillating. There's no swaying of character um, like a swaying reed. Um, he was stable. He was staunch. He was rock solid. There was no duplicity. And so they didn't go to see some wishy-washy, afraid of the truth, effeminate, non-masculine proclaimer, herald of the truth. That's exactly what they went to see. And that's what we need our priests to be, not afraid of the truth, even though it's gonna end up maybe having our heads cut off like John the Baptist. This is why we need to pray for our priests. Now, he said the same thing, about the rich people in the palaces. Why? Because they were wearing silk-clad, rich, royal garments, and John the Baptist was wearing a hair shirt and eating locusts and, 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 and hun wild honey, or wild locusts and honey. And so, no, it was locusts and wild honey, sorry. So this, this is the message. Now, what then, Jesus says, did you go to see? If you didn't go to see Reed swaying and fine clothing. What did you go to see? And so basically, it was a man, immovable as a tree, standing, as I said, for the truth. So first, Jesus pays John a tribute, right? He first pays John a great tribute. John was the herald of the Messiah. What does herald mean? Like some newspapers are called the herald, some yearbooks in high school, the herald. It's an announcement. It's somebody who comes before to proclaim. So Jesus says John is the greatest of men, all right? Why did so many then, including sinners, come to John for this baptism of repentance? Why? They recognize that God has given John this prophetic ministry, all right? What was it? What was John's ministry? easy. Repentance and reconciliation with God. Guess what that is? The world needing to repent before receiving Christ. This is exactly what confession is before receiving the Eucharist. We must repent and be cleansed so that we are properly prepared to receive the Eucharist. And so this is a beautiful time God was offering new life and restoration to everybody, no matter how sinful, for those who prepared their hearts to receive Christ because he's now in their midst. Christ is now in your midst. Are we properly prepared to receive him? Therefore, a good confession. You know, the church tells us that we need technically to go once a year. They recommend Lent, and that's excellent. But I would throw in there more than that. Trust me, we all need to go. I mean, there's, there's no, I mean, we could go every day. John Paul used to go every week, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to do that. So 
if you can't do it on a regular basis, at least Lent and Advent. They are two penitential seasons. And so confession, a good confession of our sins in Lent, and especially, or should say Advent and Lent, is recommended. While the church, as I said, says that we only go once a year, try to go at least these two times, and, and preferably even monthly. First Saturdays, that's the time. Try, try, try to go first Saturdays and fulfill the first Saturday obligation. You could join us right here at the Marians. So anyway, John, basically what is his role here? John the Baptist is key. He's key. Why? Because and now I'm sharing my seminary notes with you. Again, because we learned in our scripture seminary classes all about this. And I always want to share this. It's, it's, it's one of my joys. Today's a joyful day, Gadate Sunday. And so John completed the cycle of prophets. Now, <clears throat> who was the first great prophet? Elijah. Then there were many prophets, all the way Isaiah and others, to John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist, they had, he was the last of the great Old Testament prophets. He's considered Old Testament because he died before Christ. His passion, death, and resurrection. Now, the prophets had longed to see this good news. So, so what the prophets longed to see now came to completion. In Christ, in John is paving the way. He's the herald. All right. So why did Jesus seem to contradict this then? Why did he contradict the compliment to John by then saying he's the least in heaven. You ever catch that? All right. Though John was great, he was not born under the new covenant. He was born and died not under the new covenant. He lived and died before Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection. His work on the cross was done. Now, therefore, <clears throat> he did not enjoy the benefits of the new covenant yet. What a sacrifice, right? The least of the new covenant, the least in the gospels is on higher ground than the greatest under the law. John was still under the law. He's preparing us for the covenant of the flesh, of the spirit. The Old Testament is the law. And so Moses and all the prophets would say that they longed to see what John the Baptist is now ushering in. And so John the Baptist is the greatest of the prophets, the greatest of the prophets of the Old Testament. Why is he the greatest of the prophets of the Old Testament? Because he's closest to Christ. He is. All right, he received this unique mission of being able to point out the Messiah, literally. Literally. So in the time that of the Old Testament, he belongs still to that time of only a promise. There's just a promise of the Old Testament where the work of Christ was still to be done. Now, once Christ did that work, we usher in the New Testament, right? Those who faithfully accept God's gift of grace are greater this new covenant, this New Testament, than the righteousness of the Old Covenant no matter how good they were. And they were given, you know, more. They were given grace. The Old Testament, they were given not the grace, but the promise. So in other words, you got the Old Testament who's living on a promise. And there's a song, Living on a Prayer. Living on a Prayer. They were living on a promise. But now in the New Testament, they're actually living in the grace. That's why the doors to heaven are now opened. So Isaiah... It's another one. He was 700 years before Christ. Not a lot, but he had prophesied 700 years before Christ that God would not forget his bride. All my talks you hear about the bride, Christ being the groom, the church being the bride, that all, that's all Isaiah. That's powerful. So God promised to restore, restore them because of his love and covenant he made with them back in the Old Testament, but now they broke it. So he had to restore it. That's Jesus. 
Now through the ministry of John the Baptist, we see the beginning of this restoration. And what began the, re, the, the ministry of restoration? What begins your restoration of your life? Repentance and confession. You ever wonder why John, we call him, you know, he's John the Baptist because he baptized, which is what? A cleansing of sin. People came to him and repented. What is that? A forgiveness of sins. Doesn't it make perfect sense that in the scriptures, it is repentance and confession that comes right before receiving Jesus. Doesn't that make perfect sense that that's how the church is set up? Oh, but I don't need the church. Yes, you do. I do. We all do. And it's right here in the scriptures. Right in the Bible, it's very clear that there had to be repentance and confession before the receiving of Christ. So go to confession. Give God your, for, uh, your, your repentance so he can give you forgiveness. And then you're properly prepared to receive Christ. What an amazing message. And so John announces the coming of this promised Messiah. Christ is now going to fulfill it, but we have to be properly disposed to receive him. Right? So Advent, this is a time. This is a time of penance. It's a time of... Of, of confession. It's a time of reconciliation, asking for forgiveness, just what John the Baptist was doing. You know, the, the beauty of wearing the rose today and lighting the rose candle is even in the midst of this penitential season, we have joy, an expectant joy. The coming of Christ is only two weeks away. That's what John was saying. The coming of Christ is on its way. And so the penance of Lent prepares for the joy of Easter, right? And, 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 and what is that? There's a, also a day where we were rose in Lent. It's called Laudate Sunday. That's the joy, the one Sunday of joy in Lent. In the similar way in Advent, we prepare for the joy of Christmas. So in Lent, we prepare for the joy of Easter. So we have Laudate, uh, or Latare. Did I say Laudate? That's uh, actually an app that I use for prayers. <laughs> Leitare, Leitare Sunday, right? Leitare Sunday in Lent. It prepares for the joy of Easter. And in Advent, we have Gaudate Sunday, which prepares for the joy of Christmas. And, and you notice I say joy, not happiness. If you heard my talk a couple days ago, I, I mentioned that. I said, there's a big difference between joy and happiness. We can, be, we can have happiness in the world. It happened to be, you know, I, I know when it was. It was the Sunday after Michigan beat Ohio State. Because I said, I am happy. I am happy that Michigan, my alma mater, where I graduated, won that football game. It's just, it's just an earthly happiness. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as you don't get carried away. You know, I see some of these things that fans do. I mean, my, my, come on. Let's not, let's not get overly carried away. But that's an that's a, that's a earthly happiness. Brother uh, or Father Gabe and I always share the joy. We always talk about the beauty of the 1980 USA hockey team. When given no chance to beat the mighty Soviets in hockey, absolutely the underdogs of the entire history of sports, the greatest sporting event ever, and took down the mighty Russian hockey team. There's, there's happiness in that because you, 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 you have pride, pride in a good way. You, 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 you have happiness, but joy goes beyond that. Joy is what comes only that God can provide us. Joy is, is, is that experience that when we're united with Christ and expecting to receive him. So anyway, there is this one Sunday of joyful celebration in both Advent, Advent and Lent. And we're in it today, this Gaudate Sunday. What does Gaudate mean? Rejoice. Rejoice. This third Sunday of Advent. Christ is only two weeks away. All right? As we have Leitare Sunday, which is in the fourth Sunday of Lent. Again, wearing the rose vestments. So let's not forget the reason we're here. So we always say the reason for the season. It's not about material goods. In fact, Christmas Day never used to even really be the tradition of giving gifts. It used to be actually December the 6th, St. Nicholas Day. It's not about 
consumerism or material goods. It's about joy, joy, even in the midst of a penitential season. So to finish, Christ, our Savior, came to redeem us. Now he will come again at the end of time. So do you know that we celebrate multiple comings of Christ in Advent? There's actually three comings of Christ. Now we celebrate or honor the birth, the first coming of Christ. We prepare in hope and expectation of the second coming of Christ at the end of time. But the third coming of Christ is daily into your hearts through the Eucharist. And you're about to receive him now. So this is the reason. He comes to reconcile all creation to himself. And in between, he prepared our hearts to receive him daily in the Eucharist. Eucharist means thanksgiving. And I believe that's why Advent comes right after Thanksgiving. So how beautiful that we didn't even, when we set Thanksgiving in our country um, over 100 years ago, we didn't even know why we were doing it. But God knows why. For me, it's the same thing in life. Sometimes we don't even know why we're doing something. But God has us do it. Praise be to God. And let us this day take a few minutes in gratitude and joy for the expectation in coming, as John told us, that we will receive in Christ. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born, born of the, the Father, Father before, before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the receiving of our Lord, let us offer God our petitions. That Christ may form church leaders into prophets and messengers to prepare his way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That the Lord our judge may bring vindication and divine recompense for the oppressed of our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That Jesus may bless with joy and gladness all experiencing sorrow and mourning this holiday season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That this Eucharistic community may be granted the gifts of wisdom and fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may be crowned with everlasting joy by our Lord in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the intentions that we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call or write to us, 
May the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, we place these petitions before you and let us all be heralds as John the Baptist was to proclaim Christ to all the nations. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now be taking up a collection for the daily expenses of the shrine. We appreciate your generosity. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice that you have. The praise and the glory of his name for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, O Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. <clears throat> lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. There Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. 
to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the joyful hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. Say to the faint of heart, be strong and do not fear. Behold, our God will come and he will save us. Acts of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. From the diary of St. Faustina, entry 180. During Advent, a great yearning for God arose in my soul. My spirit rushed toward God with all its might. During that time, the Lord gave me light, much light to know his attributes. The first attribute which the Lord gave me to know is his holiness. His holiness is so great that all the powers and virtues tremble before him. The pure spirits veil their faces and lose themselves in unending adoration and with one single word they express the highest form of adoration, that is, holy. The holiness of God is poured out upon the church of God and upon every living soul in it, but not in the same degree. There are souls who are completely penetrated by God, and there are those who are barely alive. The second kind of knowledge with the, which the Lord granted me concerns his justice. His justice is so great and penetrating that it reaches deep into the heart of things and all things stand before him in naked truth and nothing can withstand him. The third attribute is love and mercy. And I understood that the, the greatest attribute is love and mercy. It unites the creature with the creator. This immense love and abyss of mercy are made known in the incarnation of the word and in the redemption. And it is here that I saw this as the greatest of all God's attributes. Let us pray. 
We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, thank you everybody for being with us as we approach in joyful expectation of our coming of our Lord. You notice St. Faustina talks in her diary, and we just heard kind of a culmination of this. Yesterday I did a talk on Dark Night of the Soul, Dark Night of the Senses, from John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila. You can find it on our YouTube channel. And what's fascinating, and I didn't even realize until I was working through thinking of that talk, St. Faustina went through six years of darkness before our Lord ever said a word to her. And he put her in darkness, extreme darkness, to the point that she thought she was in the wrong place. What am I doing here? I, she didn't have that connection with the Lord. Think St. Faustina. She went through a dark night. Then God brought her into the light. And what did Brother Alex just read? Did you hear her words? She talked about the bright light, the light that God gives us. That is why in coming of Christmas, comes right after the solstice. No, it's not some pagan holiday. It's because after that, all the days get lighter. They get brighter. We are now in darkness. With the coming of Christ, we find the light. So hopefully you will too. If you're struggling with a dark night, watch the talk because the talk has, at the end, an explanation of the light that Christ gives us. What an amazing expectation and joy that we have today for the coming of Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us, us in, in battle. battle. Be, be our, our protection, protection against, against the wickedness and snares, snares of, the of the devil. May God uh, rebuke him, him, we humbly pray. pray. And do and thou, O Prince, Prince of the, the Heavenly Host, host by the by power the of God, of God cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we conclude today with our uh, praying of the novena to Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now tomorrow, December the 12th, is a very special day. This is the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe. It's also Father Bernard, uh, one of our Marian priests, 90th birthday. God bless him. But let us prepare in the final day of this novena by offering ourselves, especially for the protection of life, of which Our Lady of Guadalupe is the patroness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. O Our Lady of Guadalupe, mystical rose, make intercession for Holy Mother Church, protect the sovereign pontiff, help all those who invoke you in their necessities. And since you are the ever Virgin Mary and mother of the true God, obtain for us from your most holy son, the grace of keeping our faith, sweet hope in the midst of the bitterness of life, burning charity, purity, and the precious gift of final perseverance. Amen. God bless you all and have a great rest of your day.
Hi, I'm Father Chris Aylor of the Marian Fathers, and I want to tell you about a grace I hope you don't let pass by. As a member of the Association of Marian Helpers, you can receive all the graces of our masses and prayers and penances just like you were a Marian priest or brother by decree of the Holy See. It doesn't cost anything, and it takes but a few seconds to sign up. Please visit micprayers.org or call us at 800-462-7426. God bless you.